So like I said um, in my previous video, this fellowship program is targeted at the young Africans who are between the ages of 25 to 35 years old, who are graduates and sometimes even undergraduates that are doing amazing things in their domain, uh, whether as, as um, civic leaders, as business leaders or as public administrators. So this now answers the question of the three tracks. So the three tracks in the fellowship are the leadership in business, leadership in civic engagement, leadership in uh, public administration. So how do you know which one you fall under? So I'll try to give very practical examples in the next video on how to be able to go through that. But just so again, you have more context, like I said, 700 Africans are selected across Africa. Um, Nigeria always has the larger share. I mean, when you look at our, our you know, population de demography, we're about the largest in, sub in Africa, not just sub-Saharan Africa. So it makes sense that we probably have the, like, the largest chunk. This year, in 2023, we're about 57 Nigerians selected. Um, so understanding the track to fall under is very critical. But another component, again, is to ensure that you have your CV put together. You want to have your supporting documents. You want to have your think, recommendation letters um, and also um, your passport. Yes, because you're going abroad, you definitely need to have your international passport. So if you don't have that, now is definitely a good time to apply so that you get it as quickly as possible. And it's not just for the Mandela Washington Fellowship. As long as you are seeking opportunities um, internationally, you definitely want to have that piece of document with you, not just for as a means of identification, but when you, you are going to be called upon to um, you know, come for interviews or visas, you definitely want to carry that along. So the next um, thing I will just quickly talk about before I wrap up this video is the three tracks. So I mentioned that there's um, leadership in civic engagement, that's one track. So these are the, the group of young people who are doing a lot of work in the development space. Um, so let me give an example. Let's say um, BC is, a, is, is an activist who is helping address the challenges of um, lack of access to education in rural communities. So she goes on to be able to set up a modular classroom where young the, the, the people in the rural communities go through trainings and are able to go through and take their um, examinations and then proceed to the university she's solving a critical challenge in the educational sector which is a core civic challenge right that's just a, an example in the business track so i can also give another example um shadrach is and that's my name by the way it's um it's, he's doing a lot of work in the agri space so he helps rural farmers who are having challenges in terms of post-harvest losses to, put, to develop solutions that help extend their shelf life. So that means at the end of the day, they are able to get more value. And he also buys that product and probably maybe converts it to uh, processed products. So this is doing value addition, is helping add, um, you know, the rural farmers also increase value and um, build their economics to maybe more higher levels. Um, that makes me a business leader. You know, it's just a typical example. And then for someone who is the public administrator, let's say you work in government, um, I would say your name is Confidence, and one of the challenges you're facing in your place of work is that the, the, there is no form of, um, trying to think of a quick example of the top of my head, there's no form of database that helps in tracking um, you know, worker productivity. So you are able to work with a group of people to develop a system that helps track worker productivity in the public space. So they are able to track whether they are growing or not, whether they are satisfied or not, and this helps in adding to the bottom line of productivity for the state. That makes you a public leader, right? So that's this, those, this, these three examples, and it doesn't matter what you're doing, but you need to be able to fit it under these three categories that I said. So identifying is usually very critical. But there's a twist to that. If you are like me who is quite versatile, where sometimes your work spills into different categories, you know, you're doing something that probably as a business leader also has impact in civic engagement. You need to pick the one with the most impact. That's how you're going to be able to translate all of that. So as far as these three tracks are concerned, this is how you're able to narrow down to it. So I'm gonna stop at this point and then take the next series. Thank you.